What's up everybody, Eric with Secondary Machine. Today I am out in the shop and I've been promising that I would make chips for you guys at some point. And so I'm figuring I should probably follow up on uh, making that happen. Today I'm out here uh, working on this little gearbox. This is the quick change gearbox that goes to, I have another Atlas commercial, not the one that was in this shop, but there was another one out in the other shop that I'm going through and fixing now. That's a really low hour machine and I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna keep it and possibly let this one, although I love this little lathe. I've made some really good precision parts on this. It's a good machine. Um, I like it a lot, but I'm thinking I might switch to the 12 inch one instead and sell this one off. Not sure yet, but either way, this needs to be repaired. The, uh, the previous owner crashed this at some point and ruin some of the gears in the gearbox. And so I am going through and making some repairs. Basically today what I am working on is making another one of these, or at least part of it. So the, uh, the inner uh, cog is 16 tooth and it was heavily damaged. And so I just removed it. Actually the outer cog had some very, very minor damage. And so I ran the uh, the cutter through and just straightened a couple of teeth out. This is certainly 100% serviceable, so I'm going to reuse it. Um, so today, basically what I'm doing over here at the Klausing is I am making a gear. And what I'm making is this 16 tooth gear, and it's going to have a piece here that's going to press fit into this. And so that's what's going on out here. Um, I've been doing a lot of machining, man. I'll tell you what, for every project, there's a side project. And for every side project, there's another side project. Machining goes very, very slowly. And I tend to be a person that really, I, I don't tend to have a lot of patience. But what I try to remember when I'm out here is to just slow down and enjoy the process. I actually ordered some gears off of eBay, some uh, plastic printed ones. And so, but this, it turns out that they're way too thick. Look at the difference. It is in fact a 1632, but it fits on the end of the lathe. I just thought 1632, I saw that come up on eBay and I was like, oh, well, there's the right gear. Well, no, this 1632 goes on the end right here and of course they're much thicker and so that wouldn't work i bought two of them and actually I, I i machined one of them down to try to make one of these but the plastic doesn't it's actually nylon and it doesn't machine well um and the truth is i've got the capacity now the everything i've been working on for several months now is just getting to the point where i can actually make gears here's the one that i machined down you can see how ugly that is um Basically just $16 worth of garbage now. But, uh, you know, live and learn, right? So what I've been working on is just trying to get to the point where I could actually make gears. And so first it started out with I bought the rotary table and that sat for a long time. Then I bought the chuck. Then I had to make that backing plate that's on there so that it could go on there and get it mounted. I turned my first MT2... Um, so that uh, I had to turn an MT2 uh, taper that goes into this bore and then a register so that this could be quick registered on here. And it came out super accurate, super, super stoked with uh, uh, what I'm able to do as a machinist now has come a long ways. And so um, I'm just turning a lot of stuff out and trying to get to where I've got all the pieces that are required to be able to fix this gearbox. It turns out also that the, uh, if I can find it, the shaft that everything rides on, um, I had it sitting in some V-blocks this morning. Yeah, this shaft here has got to be replaced too. I had it sitting on uh, these V-blocks over here. Sorry about that. Um, and as you turn this in the V-blocks with an indicator on it, it wobbles like crazy, so I'll be making one of these two for all of those gears to go on to. Um, basically, this shaft accommodates all of these gears here. 
when I pull this apart, man, I, this has been apart for probably at least a year. Um, when I pulled it apart, I just ran zip ties through there and put everything so that I would have some indication of how to get it to go back together. Luckily, the, all of the gearboxes are basically the same for the Atlas stuff. This one's actually slightly wider, but everything, the layout inside of it is basically the same. And so I can refer to this one if I get uh, a little bit stumped on how to get things to go back together. But anyway, without further ado, I will make a tooth for you guys here really quick. I'll fire up the Klausing 8520 and uh, make a cut. It's horrific loud. Um, it makes an awful noise when you make the cut. I am surprised that the Klausing actually does full depth cuts. That's the other thing is, you know, I had never made a gear before, so I didn't know like exactly whether I was going to be able to get a full depth of cut. I had to make this arbor actually to be able to put the cutter on because the cutters came with an R8 arbor. So that's another side project that I did. Um, I've had to make several other little arbors just to be able to get to where I'm at, um, to be able to make the blanks to be able to turn up the, uh, actually I'll show you, here's a blank here that uh, didn't get used. When I bored the center of this, I missed my number by about four thou um, spring in the boring bar. Uh, always, you know, when you run the boring bar through, I use the automatic feed and come back out and take a second cut and get all of the spring out of it. I was just, once again, in a hurry and failed to take all the spring out of it. And that's how I ended up like fourth out past my number. Um, you know, live and learn, right? Uh, so anyway, let's fire up the Klausing 8520. And uh, I've already advanced the cutter to where it needs to be, or the, uh, the indexer to where it needs to be to make this next cut. So I'm just going to fire it up and make the cut for you guys. And uh, let's see how she does. Always remember to butter the biscuit. All right, here we go. Oh, I've got a stop set down here too, so I know how deep to go, how far across. I've wanted to be able to make gears for a very, very long time. It's really exciting for me to be able to finally jump in and do that. this goes so to make each of these two teeth I'm on uh, the 16 holes on here and I have to advance five full turns plus 10 of 16 so basically what I do is unlock it one two three four five I'll stop it at that advance this around and then I go 10 of the 16, set it into the hole, lock it down, and make my next cut. I won't trouble you with the second cut, but uh, anyway, you get the idea. So I'm gonna go through, there's only 16 teeth on this one. I'm starting to get to see where I can see them coming around now. And I did check them with another cog and it does look like these are formed perfectly, so. Awesome, right? Eric with Secondary Machine. Talk to y'all later.